Hey everybody, this is Patrick Evans Hilton with Crazy Culinary Questions with Cocktails for Norfolk Fest events. This is our second gathering. Of course, we met last Tuesday at 7 o'clock. It's Saturday now at 7 o'clock, and we are here for another 30 minutes to enjoy a couple of cocktails, or maybe more, and to also ask some and answer some crazy culinary questions. We had some fun last Tuesday, so I know we're going to have a great time again this evening, too. Uh, I'm really looking forward to it. We answered some questions like, um, oh, <laughs> what to do with wrinkled turnips? Well, that was a loaded question right there that hit a little bit close to home. <laughs> and then we also answered things about how many times spaghetti sauce could be thawed out and reheated. And we had uh, what to do with some, some different things with leftover uh, p uh, pizza and also um, so it's a, it's a lot of fun. It's this is a lot of fun. I want to let you know what we're doing here tonight. Uh, I'm just going to read this here. Uh, we are Facebooking live with cocktails. Uh, we're talking crazy culinary questions. What to do with leftover pizza? How to craft a mint julep? Did you know that mint juleps are actually a Virginia invention? Yes, they are. Of course, bourbon is a Virginia invention too. So take that, Kentucky. Of course, Kentucky was actually part of Virginia before, and so it was Bourbon County before we let you slip, 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 slip away. Uh, what you got yesterday, corn fleas? Ask, 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 sip, sip, sip. We're all here to enjoy and have a lot of fun. Uh, log in tonight, and also we're going to be back on Tuesday night. This is all part of Norfolk Fest event Stay at Home uh, event series. This series is designed to bring you a wide variety, I'm reading this here, a wide variety of home um, uh, family-friendly entertainment to the comfort of your home. There, you can find out more information by going to uh, festevents.org. That's festevents.org. If you're enjoying the series and you're in a position to help the cause financially, many people don't realize that Norfolk Festivus is actually a nonprofit organization. So if you're in the position to help the cause, please head to the link in the description for the PayPal fundraising campaign. Every little bit counts, whether it's a quarter, whether it's a dollar, whether it's $20, whatever. Every little bit helps and uh, tremendously for all those festivals that you enjoy. My goodness, the uh, the Bayou Boogaloo, the Spring and the uh, Fall Wine Festival, the Harbor Fest, all of those help tremendously and any um, contributions that you can uh, give is gratefully, um, is, is, is really uh, a, a tremendous help too. So again, you can go to Norfolk Fest Events, or oh, sorry, festevents.org, that's festevents.org. You can also go to the Fest Events um, Facebook page, that's facebook.com slash Norfolk Fest Events, facebook.com slash Norfolk Fest Events. So we're going to start with a cocktail, and I have a real treat here. Oh my gosh, one of my favorite cocktails. I normally reserve this for um, summertime, but it's, you know, it's actually kind of warm today. It's actually still 65 degrees, but I went over and visited my good friend Brady Vasilio. Uh, Brady owns Steinhilbers. His mother, Jenny Steinhilber, uh, is the daughter of Robert Steinhilber that started Steinhilbers in 1939. And so Brady runs Steinhilbers, and he also owns uh, runs uh, La Bella Italia in La on Laskin Road. And so Joe Strickland, who's one of my favorite bartenders, uh, made a couple of cocktails to go for me and my uh, partner, Doug. Doug has a sangria. Say hello, Doug. Hello. Doug says hello. He's enjoying his sangria now. But I am enjoying a Negroni. Oh, who knows what a Negroni is? Raise your hand. Chime in. Chime in if you know what a Negroni is. Who can tell me what the three main ingredients of a Negroni are? Go ahead. Don't be shy. Shout out. Shout out. I see all you good people watching here. Tell me. Gin is one. Yes. Campari is one. What's the third main ingredient of a Negroni? Somebody answer. I see you all watching. Tiffany Kidwell. I see you watching, sweetheart. You beautiful beast, you. Tell me what it is. Okay, Eileen, yes, Jen, Jen, and Kapari. What's the other one? What's the other one? Kapari, yep. What's the other ingredient? It is vermouth. 
red vermouth. Oh, that's all right, vermouth. And so I've been hooked on, oh, got to take a sip here. What are y'all drinking? Let me know what you're drinking. I'm reading all your, I'm reading all your comments here. This is all, this is all live here. So this is all interactive. We're going to get crazy tonight. The more we sip and the more we chat. Oh, Joe Strickland, you got to go. And, um, of course, now you've just kind of got to virtually see Joe Strickland at La Bella Italia uh, when you do this. But you can still get those cocktails to go at La Bella Italia, lbilaskin.com. That's lbilaskin.com. We also had a couple of good takeout um, dishes tonight, too. But, oh, my goodness, how wonderful. And, uh, Julie, you know, you know, uh, uh, Lachlan, the bitters, the bitter flavor actually comes from the Campari. Because the Campari has that wonderful bitter flavor. So, so good. Oh, so Lisa Yankee, tell me what, um, tell me what wine you're drinking. And Forrest Warren, uh, Jim Bean. I love me some Jim Bean, too. Went out to, uh, Louisville not too long, uh, well, I guess it's been actually about two years now. Had a great, um, tour there. But, you know, being from Atlanta originally, I, I'm actually a Virginian by, well, my 10th great grandfather was a uh, came through Virginia in, uh, on the second supply ship at Jamestown, October 1st, 1608. And, uh, but I grew up in Atlanta, lived here for 30 years. And um, so, uh, but I loved Gone with the Wind. I loved Scarlett O'Hara. I loved uh, Vivian Lee. And so, if you ever have, if you've never seen the movie The Roman Spring of Mrs. Stone with Vivian Lee, watch it. Um, and uh, so she was in a scene uh, in it, and so she orders a Negroni, and just the, it was just the way she ordered it. She looked at the server, she just said, Negroni, neat. And so the uh, 10, 11 year old boy in me just thought, oh my goodness, I just have to uh, order a Negroni when I'm an adult. And so I've been hooked ever since. Ah, so Karen Sherberger asks, what is the most unusual native Virginia ingredient you have cooked with? Hmm. Well, you know, there's a lot of unusual ingredients out there, aren't there? Everything from possum to squirrel, but I've never cooked with those. Um, I remember up on the eastern shore, you'd see signs for muskrat and things like that, but I never did cook with any of those. Uh, of course, Brunswick stew, and sorry, Georgia, Brunswick stew is actually a Virginia invention. And of course, that originally had... Um, had uh, a squirrel in it, but you know, probably just different types of um, of uh, you know mushrooms and uh, fungus and things like that. Um, probably pretty pretty vanilla in ingredients. We have some really wonderful ingredients here in Virginia. Everything from uh, of course, crabs and oysters, and you know, may, maybe that, maybe that little pea crab. You know, of course, I probably didn't really cook with that; just ate that little sucker, kind of raw. You know, that little tiny red crab that crawls around inside your oyster. You know, it's supposed to be good luck when you get one. And you're supposed to eat it along with the oyster too. And I did, I do, um, but you know, maybe that. Does that help any? Um, but there are some. You know, some people. You know do the seaweed and the, the sea beans and things like that, but I've actually never cooked with some of those two. So Dave Calvert, I've done squirrel pot pie and fried squirrel, and Dave Calvert, knowing you, I'm not surprised. I need another sip of, I need another sip on top of that there. All right, and so let's see. Let me scroll scroll back down because I had another question. Timothy Wentz, favorite mar favorite homemade marinades for chicken on the grill. Well, you know, I think chicken is really great with um, several different things. So I would put something like um, some soy sauce and then maybe some honey or some soy sauce and some maple syrup, uh, maybe a little bit of uh, Worcestershire sauce in that. Uh, it's also great with citrus, so maybe some fresh orange juice, some lemon juice, some lime juice in there. Maybe, again, a little bit of honey. Uh, put some rosemary in there. Maybe um, a little bit of uh, other uh, herbs, like some thyme or something like that. 
Um, you know, those those are two just off the top of my head that would be really, really great. One thing I actually like to do with chicken too, I hate to say it, it's not really homemade, but I like to use some Heinz 57, you know, in there, and then maybe put some fresh uh, herbs like some paprika, um, it's not paprika, I'm sorry, some um, parsley or something like that too. So Jordan Lett, I made too much macaroni and cheese, what can I do? Well, you know, it's a shame if you can't finish all your macaroni and cheese, but one of the things I like to do with macaroni and cheese is to put it out flat onto a baking sheet and then let it chill overnight and then uh, kind of cut it into wedges and then you can dredge that in a little bit of panko and then you can fry those and make almost like a, uh, a little uh, cake or something out of that. You can also use that and scoop them into balls with like a melon baller and then roll those around in the flour or some cornmeal and fry those also and have some really ooey gooey delicious macaroni cheese uh, balls too. So I hope that really well too. David Calvert, mean. Yes, I am mean. I'm so sorry. But of course, I love you. And of course, I know you. And that's why I'm busting your chops there too. So you really have cooked with squirrel. You know, I grew up in Georgia. Uh, although, like I said, I've lived here for 20 years. And I've had some different things before too. I lived in Texas for a little while. Yes, fried mac and cheese. Indeed, Lisa, it is yummo. Um, so I've had rattlesnake, and I've had some different things, and I've been to some of those bizarre food dinners, but, you know, I, I've never have had squirrel before, and I'm certainly not opposed to it. Um, you know, I, I do eat a lot um, vegetarian and a lot vegan, but I am an omnivore, so I would try squirrel. So Dave Calvert, next time we're up in Cape May, New Jersey, uh, maybe you'll have to make a squirrel pot pie for us. How about that? But of course, I'm not really sure. I don't think I want to know where you would get the squirrel. So maybe not. Maybe just keep it to chicken. How about that? Eileen, have you gotten into using an air fryer? I have used an air fryer a little bit. I haven't really experimented that much with it. I have a stove that actually has an air fryer in it. Um, but I haven't really used it that much, I have to say. Um, I, you know, there's there's so many different things. I'm kind of a conventional person. I, I you know, um, I went to school at Johnson & Wells. I was classically French trained. Um, and so, um, you know, I, uh, am kind of old school in some ways. I'm not saying that there's anything wrong with using, you know, new methods at all. Um, but I just really haven't used it that much, honestly. I, I, I'm all for any kind of new technology, though. Uh, so, Jordan, what's your favorite food to sous vide? Well, you know, I think any kind of meats are really good to sous vide. And that's just where you're kind of um, putting things into a bag and you're kind of um, putting it under pressure. So you can um, put some marinade in there and you're kind of uh, forcing that in. So, you know, it's uh, steak, chicken, seafood. Those are really great things to sous vide if you uh, have time to, you know, uh, or, or have the method to actually do that. And so Forrest Warren, I love me some Forrest Warren. Folks, if you have a chance, go and pick up some food from Smoke uh, over in Newport News. That's where you can find Forrest. Grandpa was from West Virginia, West by God, Virginia, right? I've had squirrel and rabbit many times. I've had rabbit. Uh, I love rabbit, in fact. Uh, fried squirrel and pan gravy on rice is great. Again, I've just never really had the opportunity to have squirrel, but I, I'm not opposed to it at all. But I have had rabbit, and I do love rabbit. I've had rabbit mostly in French restaurants, so not the not what you would think of from um, from uh, you know uh, Appalachia or, or something like that. Even though I did grow up in Appalachia, and I've had many uh, dishes that uh, many people wouldn't think of traditionally. My grandmother cooked, you know, um, you know the whole snout a lot of times. I mean, I grew up on you know eating um, pork brains and and you know chitterlings and things like that, but just never never squirrel. Um, Let's see here. What are we going? So James Harmon. Hey, James. How are things going on up in Delaware? What's your uh, most favorite person that you have ever cooked for? Hmm. Hmm. I'm not sure if you mean anybody famous or not famous or anything like that. Um, 
maybe my grandmother, just simply because she's the person that I grew up cooking for me, and she's the person that kind of made me understand uh, the passion of cooking and cooking for others. And so the times that I've been able to cook for her certainly was uh, a real thrill to be able to do that. Uh, but I've been fortunate to be, uh, you know, on different cooking shows and this and that and to be cook with people, uh, including Martha Stewart, which was really uh, an amazing experience. Uh, so, you know, um, I think, you know, anytime you just cook in, in general uh, with, with somebody uh, and it's cooking from the heart and you're really wanting to share that experience with somebody, that's what makes it so very, very special. So, Eileen, you've had kangaroo at Freemason Agony. Oh, my goodness gracious. Did it hop all over the place, up and down those big steps and everything there? I hope you're able to catch it. So, Jordan Led, I've got a lot of beans from a can. <laughs> Well, goodness gracious, that I open. How can I use them? Well, I guess it depends on what kind of beans we're talking about there. Um, but um, so if you're talking about black beans, red beans, kidney beans, that sort of thing, you know, one thing that I would do is actually just puree those suckers and make like a hummus. You know, if you don't have tahini, that's no problem. You can use a little bit of peanut butter instead. Uh, you could also just kind of mash them, put them in a pan, a little bit of oil, fry them up a little bit, and then make some burritos or something like that with it. Um, you know, there's a lot of different things that you can, you can do with those beans. Um, you know, you could also make some falafel where you can make them, where you could mash them, puree them a little bit, and then roll them into balls and then fry those balls and you have to have falafel and all too. So Dave Calver, boy, Dave, it's a, must be a slow evening up in the Cape May for you. Uh, come up to the mountain and we'll shoot you some squirrel. Well, <sighs> certainly not that I am squeamish about certain things but uh and the whole kumbaya circle of life or anything but let's just let the squirrels live their own natural life out and uh do what they want to do up there in the mountains and what you want to do up the mountains of pennsylvania stays in the mountains of pennsylvania uh forrest warren have you ever had pawpaw yes i have i grew up in appalachia i uh, still head out to appalachia i love some pawpaws i love um, you know, all the food and food ways of uh, Appalachia indeed. And you remember the old song, Way Down Yonder in the Paw Paw Patch. Well, I certainly, I certainly have had those, and those are wonderful. So Lisa Yankee, what made, uh, what made uh, your decision to go to Johnson & Wells? Did you always have a passion for cooking? Well, I have um, enjoyed cooking. You know, sometimes cooking was, was kind of a necessity. I watched my grandmother cook, and then when my late husband Wayne and I got together, well, you know, um, I uh, had a job in banking and didn't make a lot of money, and he was a school teacher at the time and didn't make a lot of money. So cooking for me, like many people was, abs was a necessity, but I did enjoy it. And so I also enjoyed, you know, watching some cooking shows. This was before Food Network and everything. Thing, but I did enjoy cooking shows, and I had grown up watching Julia Childs and the Galloping Gourmet and everything, and Martha Stewart was coming along, and I sure did love me some Martha Stewart, and I still do love me some Martha, and so I really enjoy cooking and trying different things, and um, just seemed to have a kind of a nice natural knack for it. And then when we moved out to Suffolk and we had a small farm, um, I, we would have a lot of folks over and I would cook for a big bunch of people sometimes on a weekend, a hundred or more people. And, um, I started buying Martha Stewart, uh, cookbooks and everything. We started having big parties and, uh, entertaining. And, um, so I started thinking, um, you know, after about 13 years in banking and finance that I wanted to make some kind of transition into something else. And I began thinking that maybe, you know, transitioning to culinary arts was something that I wanted to do. And serendipitously, in the early 90s, I ran into Martha Stewart at a function in Atlanta while I was down visiting my folks and um, started talking to her a little bit about, uh, you know, Johnson & Wells and about becoming a chef. And, um, and you know, she... she you know, said that she thought that, that would be a fine thing to do. So two days later, I flew back to Norfolk. Well, that was when there was a Johnson & Wells here. It's a damn shame there's still not a Johnson & Wells here. You know what? We all screwed up by letting them go to Charlotte, but 
That's just my opinion. And so anyway, so I went in and said, hey, Martha Stewart sent me, and uh, there you have it. And so I went to Johnson & Wales and trained to become a chef. And, you know, that's one thing that um, I'm very proud to be. You know, there is no other food writer uh, that I know of in the entire state of Virginia, certainly not in our area, that is not only a trained chef, but also is a wine expert, a beer expert, a spirits expert, a cheese expert. Uh, and I don't think that anybody really has a business writing about food and um, uh, unless they can really fully understand what's going on in the front of the house and the back of the house. And I don't mean to sound self-serving, but I've really worked hard the last 25 years. And, um, and I really try to make an effort to support our local restaurants, but by not only telling why something is good or why something maybe needs to change a little bit, but, um, you know, what could be done a little bit different there too. So Eileen, once we are allowed to go to restaurants again, which is the first one you will want to go to? Well, I'm not going to answer that one in public. I'm so sorry. But let's just say that it will be a local restaurant. I won't go to a chain restaurant. You won't find me writing about chain restaurants. You won't catch me in a chain restaurant, except for maybe every now and then, you know, uh, you might catch me in a weak moment, maybe going for one of those Hardee's Beyond Thick Burgers. But shh, I do love those. But that's just very, 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 very rare because there's so many great places to get other things, right? So, um, you know, but uh, it will be a local restaurant for sure. And it kind of depends, you know, on what what's in the mood. We have so many great restaurants here. Why limit it to one? You know, I might wake up that morning and think, oh my God, I got to have seafood or I want fried chicken or, you know, I want Mexican or I want Italian. So, yeah, you know. All right, Karen, with all the strawberries out now, what's something really different to make besides strawberry shortcakes? And so here's what I would do. I would take the strawberries. I would um, cut the tops off. I would uh, wash them. I would cut them into quarters. I would puree them. I would put a little bit of Grand Marnay in them. And then I would uh, take those and then I would get some, uh, you know, just maybe... You could, you, you could use pancake batter if you wanted to, but you can make your own pancakes if you want to, but make them very, very thin, almost like a crepe. And then uh, inside that crepe, put in a little bit of ricotta uh, cheese or something sweeter, or maybe even a little bit of brie and fold that over and then drizzle that bad sweetened boy all over the top with a little bit of whipped cream. And I've got a great recipe. If you want to tag me in a post or if you want to email me at Patrick, at virginiaeasonddrinks.com. I have a great recipe for a rum-infused uh, whipped cream that would be perfect on that, too. So let's see what else. So um, let's see what else we're going on. All right. Well, let's see. It's time for another sip. What else are y'all drinking out there? What else are y'all drinking out there? This Negroni is absolutely perfect, I have to tell you. Now, usually Negronis are served as an aperitif. An aperitif means that it kind of gets your juices flowing, uh, and that's what the bitter flavor from the Capari in this does. But it's just something that's wonderful on its own, too. Miss Sherberger, what are you drinking up there in, in Irvington? Tell me, I'll let you know. Oh, Eileen, I miss the Saturday morning coffee get togethers. I used to do something called the Buzz Club, and so we get together over coffee. Would you be interested in doing that again when the coffee shop's open? I think so. I mean, I, I do, you know. But I also think we need to do more things like this, too. Um, and so, um, uh, you know, I, I think that. Um, we can all meet in some way. You know, we're all in this together. This is a very scary time for all of us. And, you know, you don't have to be a trained chef. You don't have to be a bartender. All you have to do is just really appreciate um, good food and good drink. And good food and good drink comes from local restaurants. Um, so you really just have to support 
um, you know, what's coming out of these local restaurants, people that are putting their heart and soul into offering you something of quality. Uh, and the quality comes, it doesn't come from prepackaged food from Iowa that, that some line cook, um, you know, is reheating in the microwave. And I'm sorry that it sounds like that, and I'm not trying to diminish anybody's role or anybody's responsibility, you know, or anybody's job, but, you know, it's just not the same. I'm sorry, it's not the same. If you've had, you know, a breakfast sandwich from, from Ray Ray's at Ray Ray's at the Mayflower, then how can you honestly say that compares to something at, you know, that place that has those golden arches outside? Or, you know, if you, um, you know, had, you know, Italian food at La Bella Italia or Aldo's or Pasta e Pani or Menino's, how can you honestly say that it's the same as, you know, the kind of generic stuff that they serve at that place that, you know, is the garden that has the olives in it? I mean, it's not. It's just not. And plus, their heart and soul, it's not in it. It's not in it. And they're not contributing to the community that it's not. And so until the last breath leaves my body, I am going to be promoting local you know, I I just am, you know, and I hope that you support local too. I hope you support all local businesses, but of course we're talking, this is Virginia Eats and Drinks, and so I'm talking specifically, you know, um, breweries and restaurants and wineries and distilleries and specialty food producers and specialty food shops. So, um, you know, we've just, we've got to do this, especially now. Boy, especially now, we've really got to do this. So, Karen, my usual Grey Goose tonic and lime, yes. Woodford and ginger is my cold weather drink. Ah, yes, well, that's always really good, too. Um, but, yeah, so, you know, we've really, really just got to do this, too. So, what else are y'all drinking? What other questions do you have for me? My goodness gracious. So, I just want to read this again to remind you while we're here tonight. And, again, we're going to be back on Tuesday. Every time it's going to be a little bit different. I will have a different drink. I will be talking about different topics. You'll have an opportunity to ask different questions. And, um, and we're just going to have fun. We're just going to have fun with this. So, Again, you know, we're talking about crazy culinary questions with cocktails. Uh, this is part of Norfolk Fest Events Stay at Home Event Series. The series is designated to bring you a wide variety of family-friendly inter friendly entertainment to the comfort of your own home. If you're, inter if you're enjoying this series and are in a position to help our cause, because Norfolk Fest Events is a nonprofit organization, uh, please head to the link in the description for our PayPal fundraising campaign. Uh, every little bit counts and is tremendously great and we're tremendously grateful for any contributions. So you can go to festevents.org, that's festevents.org, or you can head over to their uh, Facebook page, that's facebook.com slash Norfolk Fest Events. Uh, let's see what we're got what we're getting here. Um, so let's see. So Eileen says, I try to support Portsmouth Western Branch restaurants. I wish they would review more of them. There are some really great ones. And you know yeah, you know, um, there, there's just, um, there's sometimes no rhyme or reason with what happens with, with reviewing, um, you know, things too, except sometimes, you know, there are so many restaurants that, you know, it really is incumbent, and if restaurant owners or chefs are watching, sometimes it's on you to let folks know that you're out there, because, you know, it's me and, and and some other restaurant critics and everything, legitimate restaurant critics, it's just it's just them. And, you know, sometimes you're not you're just not on a radar right then and there, you know. Sometimes you just gotta let us know what's going on. I mean, you just do. And there, there's no disrespect or anything, except that there's a lot of noise out there and to rise above, you just gotta sometimes say, Hey, here I am, I'm doing this cool thing. Could you sometimes, could you, if you have time, could you come check me out? That's all it is to it. It really is up to the restaurant owner to sometimes just say, you know, here I am and this is what's going on, you know, uh, because there are so many restaurants out there um, that it's, it's just really hard to, to get to everything, you know, and because there's everybody, everybody's under budget constraints, 
you know, with Virginia Eats and Drinks, it's me, myself, and I that does everything, too. All right, so Lisa, do you have a favorite or recommenda recommended way to make crab cakes? I do, in fact. I make some really damn good crab cakes. I'll have to tell you that. But um, you know what? I want to save that for a video that I'm going to do very, coming up very, very soon. But I call it one, two, three crab cakes, and it's just that easy. It's just that easy. So I want to tease you a little bit because I kind of got that reputation a little bit and it's earned naturally, so. I am gonna tell you how to do some really darn good crab cakes coming up very soon, though I promise. I'm gonna be doing some videos uh, with a few different things, so be on the lookout for that, but I promise you, I, that was not gonna, that's not gonna be too long before I'll be doing some of my very favorite crab cakes. So Karen, next Tuesday is Cinco de Mayo. Where does the time go? And I hate that it's called Mayo because well, of course, they pronounce it mayo, not mayo, because I hate mayo. But anyway, can you share some tasty ideas for food and drink? Well, you know, it's hard to go wrong with some guacamole. And guacamole is easy because all you got to do is just get some really good fresh avocados, cut them open, and then mash them up, and then put in a little bit of seasoning, you know, some like uh, a little bit of hot sauce or a little bit of crushed red pepper, uh, a little bit of salt. Uh, I like to use some, uh, you know, some of the really large flake um, sea salt, and uh, you can fold in a little bit of sour cream if you wanted to. You can fold in a little bit of uh, salsa if you wanted to. I love using blue corn tortilla chips, and then that's all you got to do for that. Um, you know, you can also have set up a buffet uh, bar with some uh, taco uh, bar. So, you know, some different uh, tortilla shells, hard and crispy, and then a variety of proteins from tofu to seafood, uh, including uh, some fish and some shrimp. Uh, you can also have some chicken out there, some different shredded cabbage, some different uh, lettuce, some kale, uh, some other toppings, like a couple of different types of cheeses, like maybe some shredded uh, cheddar, maybe some uh, cojita, uh, the farmer's cheese, uh, maybe some ch diced um, tomatoes, some diced jalapeno, uh, a variety of salsas. Um, for drinks, you know, of course, it's got to be a margarita. And so maybe I'll give a recipe for a really good, easy margarita. I did it a couple of weeks ago, actually, on the uh, Coast Live show, and it actually uses a Virginia um, uh, cider. It's really easy, and it's so good. Uh, so I'll try to repost that if I remember. Help me remember that, though, too, because the Negroni is going pretty fast, if you know what I mean. Um, but um, And then some tequila shots. There's so many different good te tequilas out there and all, too. Um, and then you can make some skinny margaritas, too. So what I like to do is, um, you know, a shot or two of tequila and then a little bit of fresh lime juice and then seltzer water. It's just as simple as that, too. So I hope that that answers your question. All right, let's see what else is going on. Anna, hello, Anna. I'm sending my love to you, too. It's good to see you. Kenny Sloan, it's good to see you. I hope things are good at Finn and Finn and Tonic out there. Love you, friend. Um, let's see what else is going on. All right, let's see. So what else is going on with y'all? Any other questions? Any other questions? Oh, oh, we've got time for one more question. It's, oh, what? You know, I feel like Carol Burnett, you know, it's, it's almost time to wrap it up. You know how she wrapped everything up. I'm so glad we had this time together. Should I be singing? You want me to sing? Just to share a laugh and sing a song. Seems we just get started and before you know it, comes the time we have to say so long. Of course, I'm not ready to say so long just yet. I still got another couple of sips left. I'm going to take another couple of questions. If you got them, do you have them? Have you had fun tonight? I have fun doing this. I just love, I just love sharing time with y'all. You know, it really is very special. Okay, so Anna, what are you putting in your garden? And in fact, we just planted the garden yesterday too. So kind of keeping it a little simple this year, uh, a lot of tomatoes. We found out last year that we didn't want to do too many tomatoes because everybody's like, oh my God, I put too many tomatoes in. I don't know what to do. Well, last year we put in a couple of tomatoes and we really didn't have as many tomatoes as we wanted to. So this year we're putting in more tomatoes, not as many cucumbers. You know, we actually had more cucumbers last year than we wanted to. And I'm not anti-cucumber by any means, but 
we still had more cucumbers than I wanted. So we got we planted a few cucumbers, more tomatoes, love different peppers. So, but not so many hot peppers, you know. A um, couple of milder peppers so that, you know, because, I mean, the hot peppers are fun, but honest to God, after a while, what the hell do you do with so many hot peppers? I mean, you know, uh, yeah, eh, you know, I mean, I like hot peppers, but please. Um, we actually planted some watermelon this year and a bunch of herbs. Of course, I've already got a lot of herbs around the house. We planted like 30 rosemary plant bushes last year, and boy, they're really going crazy this year, which is great. Planted something like 50 mint plants last year. They're in a contained area, but they're not in pots, so they're just, oh, it's so beautiful the way they're just taking off. We've got a lot of lavender. We've got a lot of sage. We've got a lot of um, chives. This year, we planted some dill. Um, so, you know, it's, it's just kind of fun. I like going out there and, you know, being able to snip, snip, snip and use some fresh stuff and being able to see. Let's see if we can get up here. Oh, my goodness. That was the dog's bowl. I'm sorry. Um, I'm just going to see if we can go over here while we're doing this. And I'm just going to take a little walk real fast as we're as we're parting, parting ways here. I'm going to walk outside. Oh, everybody like my disco ball here. Everybody should have a disco ball in their kitchen. I hope that I'm not going to lose the... Um, this is our pergola, and so we're normally going to have... You know, we have a canopy on top, and then we also have curtains on the side, but we don't put that up until Memorial Day. But um, here is our garden out back that you can see that we're planting so you know I don't know what the hell somebody's doing next door sounds like they're making something but yeah you know it's a nice nice quiet evening here in London Bridge so anyway I think that's about it for tonight because I'm going to finish my Negroni. And then one of the things that I absolutely cherish more than anything is to sit on the sofa with my partner, Doug, and my little Chihuahua, Miss Pico de Gallo, and to watch a nice movie and enjoy a cocktail and unwind because I get up about 3 in the morning and start work. So, so those that's going to come pretty soon. But... I do cherish all of y'all. I cherish all of my online friends, all my personal friends, all the folks that follow me, all the people that put your trust in me to let you know, you know, maybe where you might consider going to eat, where you might consider sharing, you know, a meal, uh, where you might consider having a celebration. It means a lot to me. I've been doing this for 25 years. I also cherish my relationship with Novik Fest events. They're a great group of people. They make our lives so wonderful here in this region. Um, I can't wait for things to get back to normal um, and to, um, uh, have those festivals again. I'm so grateful that we can do this. And uh, anyway, thank you so much. And uh, y'all have a great week, rest of your weekend. And we're going to be doing these crazy culinary questions with cocktails again on Tuesday. So I hope to see you then. Much love. Stay happy and stay healthy. Mwah.